Hey everybody, welcome back to Post Status Draft. I've got a unique interview today, but one that's overdue with my friend Vova, Vova Feldman of Premius. Um, I, I met, I'm trying to think Vova, when we met, but I think it was at a big word camp, maybe Philadelphia, and this was years ago. And what I've admired about you along the way is this was your thing and how you've stuck with it. You continue to hustle and grow this because to me, outside in, I go, this guy's passionate about what he does called freemius because you're always doing something man i wish i had some of your energy um but anyway vova would you mind sharing a little bit about what you do in wordpress of course so first of all thanks for having me corey i think it's the second time we're doing this on post status yeah. uh so a bit about freemius uh we are we are a payments taxes subscription infrastructure uh, with the focus on software and more specifically on the WordPress products ecosystem, which is plugins and themes, uh, something that I've been passionate about for uh, probably 10 years already. I've uh, been running with Freemius for about 80 years. Um, we're a good sized team right now. I uh, have uh, over 1,000 uh, products sold for Freemius. Uh, over 500 uh, selling partners that are selling through Freemius. We keep growing, uh, getting you know uh, bigger and more successful uh, products joining the platform. Very exciting. Keep evolving all the time. Yeah, things are going well. Yeah. Well, we're going to dive into all of that um, for sure. But again, I could say to, to you, Bob, I want to give this as a compliment to you, but anybody listening to is, what you love in entrepreneurs is it's not just the money, it's passion, it's purpose, it's people. And again, you've been doing this for a long time. And I think that's the people that win and do great in the world is just staying with it and growing this thing that you've got today that you just shared what all, where, where all Freemius is today. Where did free, when did Freemius start? So I think I, I opened the company uh, in the beginning of 2015. Okay. Uh, but I actually started like processing and thinking about it uh, in the end of 2014. Yeah. So, so what led you to Freemius and what you're doing and have been doing for, for what, eight years now? Yeah. So uh, before Freemius, uh, I was a CTO, a co-founder, we started a company that was acquired in mid-2013, and I left the company slightly before it was acquired, so I had the freedom to kind of choose what I want, uh, and I had a side project, like many other developers, something that you know I built in my spare time, and I realized that I had many users. It was totally a free uh, product, uh, but I said, you know, let's see if we can turn that into something bigger joined with another partner online from Slovenia. Uh, and he was the UI UX guy. And we've been working for a year. We actually joined with another developer and it was part-time and turned that you know side thing into a business. Uh, but what was really interesting to discover after this year of where two of us worked on this full-time is that the product didn't change at all. And everything that we've been working was you know, the infrastructure that's re related to the commercial stuff. So we realized, you know, that was the aha moment that something doesn't make sense here, right? Like anyone who want to sell their products online, their software, their SaaS, whatever, regardless of their product, need this type of infrastructure out there. And it doesn't make sense that you would need to spend 10x more time on the infrastructure rather than the product itself where actually what makers you know, and creators want to focus at is their product and their customers and not the infrastructure. So we basically identified a gap in the market. I started to talk with you know, many people in the industry, get their feedback. Uh, you know, it was before I involved in a WordPress ecosystem and everything. Uh, now many of them are my friends. And this is how, you know, it all started. We realized it, it's a good opportunity, something that we're passionate about. And that's how we kind of embarked into Freemius. 
I think if you had started uh, a couple years earlier, uh, the 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 need, like I I know the need of what you're doing is like how much time and effort you're spending with all these things when you just want to focus on your product and how many product companies could have been fitted. Um, but it's obvious that the, the need is there, you know, for doing all this stuff. And I love the, when you're able to take something that's not in their full wheelhouse, but they're capable of doing, uh, yeah, capable of spinning these things up, but like let them concentrate on product. I think that's pretty cool. Well, Vova, you, Vova, you spent, a lot of time, you've got a lot of experience and expertise, even beyond WordPress. And what I'm curious to hear is today, being the product guy um, that have seen so much data in all the, the customers that you have and their customers, where do you think we are today in WordPress products? Like overall, what are your perspectives and opinions about where we are in the state of WordPress products? Commercial WordPress products, I should say. Yeah. So I think the market, you know, if we're comparing it to what was like five, six years ago, it is much more mature these days. Uh, like we also, you know, everyone uh, saw the amount of acquisitions that happened in the past few years. And I think that unlike when previously everyone could just get into the market and build a lifestyle business very easily. Today, it's harder because there is much more competition. And also, I'm seeing more players with money that getting into, a mar into the market much more strategically. If previously, the WordPress products ecosystem was driven mostly by developers and agencies, today you have people that are looking at it from an investment perspective. That, you know, I have money, where can I make more money, right? So there is the whole SaaS yeah. business. I can go and acquire a SaaS, but that's much, in terms of operation, it's much more complex to run SaaS business than a plugin business. But on the other hand, there are plenty of plugins. Many of them are non-monetized. You know, I can buy it as a real estate investment. I, usually the people that are in that space, they're more marketing business driven. So they actually have an advantage from a commercial perspective because they're not, you know, their excitement is uh, product, making more money and less about adding features and coding. They also have better understanding in UI, UX. So they're like more mature people are getting into a more mature ecosystem. So all of that makes it, you know, harder for new players to get in uh, because, uh, you know, the, all these dynamics that have changed. Uh, but I want to say that the market is still growing in terms of size, in terms of inventory, in terms of everything. We are seeing some verticals growing more than others. You know, before we start this converse conversation, you mentioned, uh, you know, AI. Uh, so we definitely, in the past few months, like we've seen a bunch of new products added to Freemius that are integrating with AI, AI tools, whether it's, you know, generative text or whether it's generative visuals. Uh, but we're seeing growth in that vertical for sure. So there are things happening all the time. That's good to hear um, because, you know, I, I started iThemes in 2008 and seeing it go from baby infancy to more mature, I think I kind of, uh, and then now, like you said, it's just this round of uh, investors coming in, big companies um, coming in with a lot of money to roll-ups and we were obviously a part of that um with now what's known as i guess is stellar wp um what what i wonder before we talk about future and stuff is i guess this is part of the future is my question is vova like you got these big companies can't come in and they've got a lot of money and they got a lot of firepower and can really take parts of the industry to another level um even more i would say professional uh even though I think we're pros, um, more professional. 
And I start to go like, is there still a day for the independent product owner in WordPress? What are your thoughts? I think think it will always remain this way. It's always, you know, David, Goliath. uh, I'm saying it, you know, on Freemius, like the more we're growing, the slower we can, you know, we're moving, period. Mm. There's just more things to deal with. Uh, and the fact that, you know, when you're starting something new, you are so much more agile than not only by the size of the team, but also you don't have customers that you need to respond to. So you can move so much quicker and you don't even need to deal with a lot of like edge cases and, you know, things that once you grow, you have to facilitate because you do want to keep your existing customers happy. Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, there's, there will always be a room for that indie developer uh, to build their business. How big of a business? That's another question. You know, it depends yeah. also on your aspirations and the market size and, you know, many of those things. Uh, but I definitely still think there is a room for, you know, niches, micro niches. And there are so many things and so many use cases. And, you know, to build like a business that will, again, depends on where you live geographically, but building a business that will just sustain your salary as an individual, I think it's definitely doable. You don't need so many customers. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned verticals and what I, what I have seen in just my perspective is um, like you go SEO. You got Yoast out there now. Syed Balkany has uh, WP all in one SEO, and and there's others that I'm not thinking of all the top of my head. But like that's a competitive market. So if you're trying to do something in SEO, I go wow. Not not saying there's somebody that can't innovate and disrupt, but you mentioned verticals and what are the what are the things you're seeing from a vertical side? Like I go SEO, page builder. Uh, backup, security, all these main like big categories are pretty dang competitive. Um, not to say they can't be disrupted or innovated in at all, but what are the verticals and what are the opportunities you're seeing that product owners are starting to, to lean into? In my opinion, I actually think that it's the easiest and quickest to build a lifestyle business in a very competitive vertical like SEO, mm. like backups because every website need them right so yeah. even if you capture half percent of the market you don't need to be a leader you know a half it's percent of, of 40 43 percent of the web it's huge right yeah so i know that people like thinking product people you want to innovate and come up with something you but you don't have to reinvent the wheel you can build a wheel that looks little like more shiny from the angle of the micro niche that you're targeting and that's enough because the decision i mean that's enough it requires marketing and you know all all the stuff behind the scenes to make it work Uh, but i do think that there is actually a better uh, chance to succeed in a very competitive market very competitive mass market kind of product rather than choosing like a very narrow niche that totally resets my thinking, and I love that perspective because I, it you don't have to build the next Yoast or what whatever those cool products are out there. You have to find something that sustains and does the life that you want it to to do for you. And I think that was probably what I needed to hear today. But I totally agree with you. Um, you think about that, and you're like, there's probably a problem in there that Yoast or whatever product we're talking about solves on the general level. But there's a specific thing in there you could do better for people and carve out a really good living doing that. Yeah. And I will add more to that, that we're living in an open source ecosystem. So we can piggyback on top of existing products. So if I want to start another SEO product, I can take existing one, fork it. You probably don't want to do that because there's so much code that you will need to suddenly maintain. But Theoretically, you don't need to start from zero. You can leverage all the lessons, improvements yep. that been there for decades, right? So 
So I think that's actually a big advantage because I am seeing, you know, developers that are choosing very, very narrow niche without really thinking about the potential market size and like the, the chance that they will be able to build a business that it's big enough. That's a very common mistake that people don't, you know, calculate the potential. They're kind of, you know, I'm excited about this problem. I have a client that, you know, needs it and I'm going all in. But, you know, how many clients like this out there? Is it 100, 1,000, 10,000? Like, will you be able to get to all the 10,000? No. How do you price it then? Like, you, you have to run the numbers to choose, you know, where are you aiming to grow? Take the potential, like, market and run the numbers that you can really get there because many times the calculation is simply not working yeah yeah i i see that for sure um you know if you i i see a lot of products to come from your own experience or client experience too and go they're not served as well and i i think too there's you got to add some care and passion to it to be able to do it as a lifestyle too. You know, think about Sean Hesketh at WP 101 saw a problem with his clients that was causing him problems, decided to roll out what now is WP 101. And you're like, that formula still, still works. There's enough out there. It seems yeah. like Vover though. It's like, okay, so the question would be, how do you pick that product? How do you deter, how do you find that balance? Um, what are your thoughts on that? And find like, okay, I'm going to do this. It's maybe total available market is 100,000 people maybe, you know? How, how do you even think through if you're giving advice to a developer, product, a budding product owner to, to start to find what that is? Yeah, so it, it's exactly as you, you know, try to assess the, the potential size. How much do you believe and in how much time will you be able to get to that market share, right? Whether you're running a paid only product or freemium, because if it's freemium, then there are benchmarks for conversion. So you're immediately, let's say, uh, just for the sake of the, you know, example, your total addressable market in terms of number of websites is 10,000, right? And it's a freemium product. Then most likely you're not going to get more than 5% conversion, okay? Which is great. Yeah. So it's we, we're talking about in 10,000, 5%, I think it's 500, uh, right? 10%, it's 1,000, yeah, 500. So if you are pricing your product for $100 per year, and at most you're going to get 500 customers, like run the math, that's your cap, and you will need to work hard for it. Is that enough for you? Are you aiming for something bigger? So it's actually like when you think about it, it's not so hard to do the math. You just need to do that and think about it. And many times it could be a slight shift or reframing of the product to a different market, maybe a different niche. And suddenly it can open up and, you know, change your potential a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm a firm believer too of trying stuff. <laughs> I've got way more failures than successes, but you try stuff, you know, try to refine the model and find that magical area that's your thing. And uh, it turns out pretty, pretty cool. And, and you always hear about opportunities and ideas, like once you have something, because people love to share feedback or you can ask them or ask for features. And, you know, the more conversation, even if you start with a you know, niche that is not necessarily like big enough, you can find your way if you are opening your eyes and ears into something more lucrative, more interesting by having conversations with your audience. You know, a product can also be kind of a penetration strategy to start discussions with a certain, you know. Uh, vertical or persona that you're interested to tackle for whatever reason. Uh, and then from there, you can learn about their challenges, about their pains in the business and see, you know, maybe you can make some tweaks that will actually be applicable to much bigger audience or people would be willing to pay much more for it 
or it will be, you know, will require much less support. Uh, whatever you want to optimize there. Now, the question you asked me about verticals, so <laughs> I'm jumping back a little. Yeah, so yeah. The two, the two biggest verticals that we are seeing uh, based on our data is, like you said, page builders and specifically Elementor. Uh, like there are so many extensions of top of Elementor and also for WooCommerce, like WooCommerce extensions. These are the two biggest verticals that we're seeing in Freemius. And it makes sense because those are platforms. So, it, you know, they, they have their own ecosystem of plugins pretty much and mm -hmm. different solutions that you can build. Uh, and WooCommerce is, you know, like more lucrative because people are making money by using your products. So they should have money to pay for plugins too. Um, yeah. That's uh that's really interesting. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought those would be the one you would have said, uh, but it makes sense. Um, platforms on a platform, you know, yeah. on the WordPress platform and WooCommerce is definitely, two great names woocommerce and elementor i see so much growth particularly with elementor and what they're doing over there um and getting to know that team uh a little bit and it's um it's a it's a great product so but that's interesting add-ons for elementor yep and yep. woocommerce i would have thought man that's got to be saturated but but you're saying there's still an opportunity over there. And I mean, that makes sense. I hear from Katie Keith at Barn2 and different people like WooCommerce specific businesses is doing pretty well. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, so next, I just what the future holds. Um, where you see WordPress, tech, um, we find ourselves in um, so much of the tech outside of our our bubble and wordpress has really accelerated um and we have i'm even having another conversation today about open ai and ai in general but it seems like there's a it's it's a different day in wordpress and on the web and so i'm curious what your thoughts are out into the future where is all this going what things are you seeing out there i know you're not a prophet but you have really good perspectives and I'd love to hear them where where WordPress is going where the web is going what's changing what things are you seeing challenges out there opportunities overall yeah um I mean I I do think like what is hot out there right now it's like generative AI in whatever it is whether it's text audio vi like video uh, images and I do think that like WordPress uh, is getting there through integration, through plugin developers that are building, you know, the bridges. Uh, and it's not new, you know, I will mention like Vito with and Andrew with Berta AI. Like they've been running this for over a year for sure before, you know, Chat GPT became a big thing. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure there are other products out there. Like, like I said, in the past month, we probably saw like 10 new products that are to freemius around generative AI. And I do feel that WordPress will be a big part in that play because like text and visuals is kind of, you know, one of the main things that WordPress is made for. <laughs> you know, we generate yeah. text and images. Yeah. So I think it will be you know, through plugins in the beginning, maybe in three years, you know, like something more native in terms of integration. Uh, but I definitely think that it will be, you know, very tightly integrated together. Um, so yeah, that, that's my perspective on that whole thing. In terms of, you know, growth of WordPress in general, uh, like the market share, I don't know if WordPress will keep growing. It's a hard question. Uh, I don't think it will, you know, disappear. There are many solutions out there for building websites these days, and they're great for the various niches. But this is also, you know, not something new. There, are, like Wix was there for many years, Squarespace, and all the others. Uh, so you have like different types of solutions, but in the end of the day. 
you know, the flexibility and the things that you can do with WordPress, plus adding the community component to that, this is the winner. And we're seeing that, you know. Uh, so I, I, I don't, as long as the, the community part is strong and there's no some sort of, you know, uh, deviation, separation, the community or something, you know, crazy happening, I think the WordPress ecosystem will be good for the next two, three years. I don't know what's going to happen after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I mean, WordPress has uh, evolved so much. And I think this is our time to take a big, deep breath, look around and go, we got this, you know, see these opportunities, but make sure we're still watching these opportunities and certain integration and I into WordPress. And like you were saying, and I think, and I believe the business ecosystem of WordPress can do that, can meet that challenge and opportunity. I mean, it's really an opportunity. Um, I think about the Fediverse, started having a little bit more about that. Just some alternative to closed walled garden um, that WordPress has always flown the flag of freedom, the ability to go out and build whatever you want, how ugly or awesome it is, you know, and I, I want that for, for my kids and WordPress turning 20 year, 20 this year, I've been really reflective of those things. So uh, I, I like it. I think this is an opportunity for us to rally. like you, you nailed it community. That's what drives this thing. It's not just the code code needs to change and evolve, but the people are the heart of it. So I, I love that emphasis. Voa. Um, all right. Tell me what cool things you got going on at Freemius, man. Um, I, I know you're always iterating on things, but you know, maybe the first question is, what are the what are the things about the platform you really cherish that we might gloss over because you've been doing it so long? And then new stuff you're working on um, for your your customers. Yeah. Um, I'll probably there's no like one feature that will be you know exciting for everyone. Everyone have their own flavors. Uh, I think the our main kind of selling point is that with freemius you can make more money with less headache. Uh, that's you know the the things, and you get a true partner that cares about your growth. And uh, you know we are very uh, proactive and here to help. Uh, we've been working on you know many things all the time. Uh, I will share some stuff that you know we plan to to do this year. Uh, we want to uh, like one of the things that we're lacking and been postponing for a while is uh, localizing the checkout uh, to allow it you know to be loaded in the native language depending on the geolocation of the customer. Uh, it is something that is like there are micro ecosystems uh, even though the world is global but not everything is english uh, you know countries like germany yes. france uh, places in south africa where they, they do like mostly in native languages and there are many products that are also in our space that the companies are specifically targeting their country and that's it. It's big enough that they don't need to expand to the U.S. market and other places. Uh, so this is a big one that we're really excited about. Uh, and that's it. This year, is it is happening. <laughs> we're also uh, doing some modernization of our dashboards. Uh, you know, it's time to kind of refresh the UI and give it a, a, a new uh, slick skin. Uh, so that's also, you know, things that are important for us doing some optimizations to the checkout, uh, also in terms of conversion, making it even better. Um, we did add last year a bunch of special, we call them special coupons uh, that are aimed to uh, maximize conversion rates and minimizing uh, churn rates uh, that are really unique and developers don't really need to do anything in order to, to make it happen. So for example, when someone goes and, you know, starts a cancellation process of their subscription, developers can define a coupon that will say, Hey, you know, before you go, like take 15% just to say on the subscription. Uh, so the, we seeing that really helpful, uh, 
an exit intent discount that you know if you're trying to leave a checkout in the middle give you an extra incentive uh to to continue with the checkout and and a bunch of more uh so this is just you know some of the things uh there are many more let me see if i have something yeah another one that we want to uh prioritize this year is we we do offer an affiliate platform for freemius developers but currently the the payouts uh handling is up to the developers so this is a need that we a pain that we're hearing from our community that they would love us to take care of the payouts for them it will add some you know operational uh hassle for us but it's okay you know we're going to solve it for everyone uh so that's also something that we're really really excited about and uh going to ship this year and it will you know streamline and save that whole operational hassle for developers to deal with affiliates to pay them out that's awesome i i want to go back to i love that iteration on everything you're doing for your community uh i want to go back to the localization part because something i totally glossed over or didn't even think of until you said that, but um, WordPress is global. And you mentioned three regions, countries, um, that seem to have potential for high growth uh, with unique needs that aren't served just from English, you know, uh, I, you know, from a market size, I go, gosh, Europe and that whole time zone band all the way down to what you said, South Africa. I'm not as aware that I don't have any as many relationships in South Africa, but I go Europe, gosh, um, money to spend. Uh, I meant so South America, by the way. Sorry if I said South America. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, South, yeah, yeah. well, bad. that's <laughs> that's even more interesting because um, like I see Europe for sure. Talk to me about South America. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, uh, when I say South America, I meant the, uh, no, not uh, the USA, right? I meant like right. Brazil, Argentina, all these yeah. places. So, so they're like, everything there is kind of native. That's the expectation. It's not in English. Yeah, uh, and, it's Portuguese. And the, yeah, exactly. Portuguese, uh, Spanish, Spanish, uh, you know, et cetera. And uh, they, they have a local economy that is like big enough in terms of audience that you can build a business, a local business, purely for plugins, whatever, digital business, just target your local country. But it will, you know, it's kind of awkward if you everything is in Portuguese, but then the checkout is in English. Yeah, yeah. You know, and things like that. Well, so Portuguese, you know, I spent some time in Portugal, but I know Brazil, for, for instance, enormous country. And, you know, you look at most um, global type, sites and communities let's say facebook you're going to see a portuguese in in the top you know three to five of like translations and stuff but i'm curious what you're seeing in like uh port brazil portuguese speaking obviously is dominant there um but like how are they using or wordpress how how big the market is it you know is it growing i i get kind of my perspective gets europe you know have money doing cool commerce over there using WordPress just aren't tap, you know, WordPress itself, because it is like, you know, it started here in, I guess, in the U S and grow, grew to the U S but there's so much good stuff going on there that they just don't decide to go to a word camp for instance. But I'm curious what your perspectives are in like Brazil and South America. Like how are they using WordPress? The, the actual, your customers, customers. So honestly, I don't have these answers, so I don't want to yeah. say, you know, come up yeah. with uh, with things. I, I just, you know, I, I'm like familiar on this angle from the commercial perspective and those gotcha. like micro economies. And it's not only, yeah. you know, South America or places in Europe. It's also in Asia, like, you know, Japan, Asia, uh, China, yeah, uh, like all, all these places, like the, they are focused on their country. It, they have like over 100 million, you know, yeah. uh, uh, citizens there. Uh, so it's it's big enough of a market just to win that. Uh, so just yeah. by, and I think this is something that many are maybe overlooking, but 
that's another opportunity. The fact that yeah. you have Yoast SEO, you can start a Yoast SEO competitor that it's like, you know, Japanese focused yeah. and most likely build something that in Japan will be a winner and not Yoast as an yeah. example. Okay. Well, yeah. I think you're drilling it down for me and seeing the perspectives, but I, I go, my, one of my friends from Portugal, Marco Almeida has a payment processing solution that's just for Portugal because that's how they do commerce for WooCommerce and does pretty well with it. And I'm like, I get that, you know, that nuance. And, and I guess I was asking it from a product, you know, when you think about the world, I go, okay, I think big categories of, of, you know, products but now it's drilling it down to like there might be a need that just like his product solution isn't going to probably be used outside of portugal but it's in there there's i think there's 35 million people there you know so what percentage of that like you said can make a living and do good work um there's there's just trying to demonstrate for those listening to like there's you're saying there's more opportunities than where we always think of instantly. Yeah. And I will say it's even easier, even if the product is not specifically relevant to that geolocation, but if all your marketing efforts, your branding, the people behind the product are native and local, you can win that market in some markets because that's what people are looking, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I, I I'm pretty sure that, you know, many of the market leaders, whatever it is, SEO or other places, they're not optimizing for Japanese. Maybe they localize and have some automatic plugin that does something, but that's, is not really optimizing for Japan. Like if you right. really want to build a business there, you need to go to the local events, yep. have people that understand the culture know the you know whatever how the websites are supposed to look there so it's like a whole yeah. different ecosystem so you don't even need to invent anything you just need to localize your brand company product to the local market in some economies to succeed and get involved there with the local influencers and you know target specifically that market and i think you can win that i i've seen some products are doing that yeah Okay, thank you for letting me t t digress on that because I just keep going like what are the opportunities because we need more and more people innovating out there and being able to see there's there's really incredible opportunities in WordPress that, that don't come but a part of the localization so I totally understand that's one of the things you're excited about to do the UI UX work you're doing will be great I'm sure and the affiliates that's uh, helping people make money so I love it you you're a platform and and you're really taking care of your community with this forward thinking thing. So. I also want to add one more thing. Uh, in the past two years, we did recognize that, you know, previously we've been very focused on developers. It's not like we ignored users, okay, but we didn't always pay attention or kind of look on the perspective of the user. Mm -hmm. And we did get a little pushback in the past two years, I would say. Uh, and we're working very hard to, first of all, address the feedback that we are receiving, uh, as well as changing kind of the way we work. Uh, whatever we do in a company, we think about developers and we also put ourselves in the minds of users, you know, to make sure because sometimes, you know, it, it's a, can be a, 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 a thin a thin line, I would say, you know? Sometimes yeah. there is a balance that you need to keep, you know, because something that the, a developer will benefit directly doesn't mean necessarily that yeah. the user will benefit from. So there is some sort of a balance and, you know, our mission going forward is to make sure that Freemius is a great solution for users as it is for developers. Yep. And yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, Bova, thank you for your time today and talking about sharing really openly about what you're seeing in the product market with WordPress. Uh, I think it's something that's always like, I love products. So I love talking about product and geek can geek out on that. Where can they find more about Freemius and you? Sure. Uh, so uh, freemius.com. 
is our homepage. Uh, we write a lot of uh, content around the business, marketing, pricing, customer support, everything related to the business, to the commercial side uh, of software, plugin, theme developer, development, uh, freemusic.com slash blog. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's Vova Feldman. Uh, I would also like to mention that a big chunk of our team is going to be in WordCamp Asia next month. So if you're coming, I have the t-shirt here. So Nice. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, so if you're coming, you know, please come say hi. We're also going to uh, have uh, our famous makers meetup where we bring together, uh, you know, product makers, uh, plugin and theme developers, uh, SaaS owners, uh, just for a little, you know, side event of networking, drinks, food, uh, and, you know, having good time together. Uh, it's an invite-only event, so if you are, you know, a product person and interested to come, uh, email us at meetups at freemius.com, and we will happily send you an invite. That's awesome. And also, you're in post status Slack. So, Absolutely. Well, thanks, Vova. Uh, love what you're doing. Keep up the great work, and thanks for sharing your perspectives with us today at post status Draft. Thanks for having me.